Welcome to my introduction to clicker training. I'm going to run through exactly what clicker training is, my methods and how you can start clicker training your dog too. Now I'd originally made another clip, I'd uploaded it but not made it public because there was something missing, I wasn't quite happy with it, I just couldn't put my finger on it. But uh, when I came down to clicker training the cat at the weekend, which is something I've been meaning to do for a while, she showed me straight away exactly what I'd been missing. And that's what's totally amazing about clicker training. You build a bond, uh, you build that respect between you and your dog or your cat. You learn to start communicating with each other on a level that you perhaps hadn't known existed before. Um, there are a few key points, I've actually made some notes so I don't skip over them. Um, consistency. Dogs need consistency. They are consistent. They're consistent with each other. Us as humans, we're not so consistent. So um, something in the form of a clicker is consistent for them. Um, that goes hand in hand with timing. So when they've done exactly what you want from them, that's where the click comes in, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. Um, and then, of course, there is patience. They need patience, they need time to work things out. Dogs aren't in a rush, they have patience for each other, they have so much patience for us. So um, give them some patience back, let them work things out. After all, there is a, another key point which perhaps some people, they don't always cover, maybe, I don't know if it's because they don't realise it, but... Um, mental stimulation if you can read that and um, that's a big part to me I mean it's okay taking your dog for a walk loads and loads and loads and getting them fit but to really tire them out that's where the mental part comes in they need to have their brains working they, they that's how you're going to tire them out 20 minutes of clicker training is going to tire them out and feel like make them feel like they've done so much more than if you took them for a, a run for an hour. And that's the key point, that is to tire them out. Now, um, while you're asking your dog to do something, for example, a sit, they may ask you questions. And this is where the mental stimulation comes in. This is the, their brain working. So if you're asking them for a sit, uh, or training it for the first time, you may notice that they'll run through other things because they might not be sure of the answer yet. So they may lay down, they may walk around, they may look around as they're thinking, they're trying to work it out. And it's, it's a brain training game. This is how they tire themselves out. But as soon as they answer that with the sit, that's where the clicker comes in. So as soon as their bottom hits the floor, click, and then you can offer them a reward. Now, um, as you can see, I tend to use hand signals. So sit, lay, stay. Um, through experience, I find that verbal commands can um, excite dogs and confuse them, um, as can a touch or a stroke. Um, touching and stroking is also confirmation to them so again you have to be careful when you apply these things to them in case you're confirming the wrong kind of behavior or action so as a general rule I tend to rule out verbal commands and just stick to hand signals um, after all it is a form of their own language they communicate with each other using calming signals and body language so it sort of works out that that's how they're going to learn better they're going to understand us more if we communicate to them on their level right so how you would start clicker training and the thing my cat actually showed me um, she'd never come across a clicker before of course and many dogs haven't um, you also need a pot of treats Again, my cat, she's not very food driven, so they had to be really high value. Um, my dogs just, they're fine with kibble, but um, my cat needs something like chicken or cheese 
um, it depends on the dog basically so what you would do starting from the very beginning you need to get your dog used to this sound as my two are floating around me at the moment um, so click it can be quite a startling sound so what you want to do is throw a few treats onto the floor and then as soon as they go for the treats click so they start associating the click with a reward as I just feed my two here and that's how you're going to get them used to the click now this clicker has a volume control it's quite loud on quiet anyway and that's perfectly fine you can get many different clickers um, ones with whistles and pointers etc um, so after you've got them used to the clicker the base or the foundation of all my training is um, built up from eye contact eye contact is a big 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 thing it is what you want from your dog all the time whether they're in the house with you in the garden out on the street in a field you want eye contact with them you want them looking to you rather than relying on a verbal command they can just carry on doing whatever they're doing if they're listening for a verbal command but if they're looking to you all the time waiting for that next instruction that that's brilliant because that's what you want you want them to be following instructions from you so down to eye contact which I do believe I've just uploaded a video explaining the eye contact um, I will just run through it anyway so you've got your clicker it's advisable just to hold it behind your back just to avoid any distractions at the moment same with the treats on the side out the way um, all you want to do after your dogs finished associating the click with that reward just wait for them to come back round and connect with the eye contact as soon as you get that connection and this is a must as soon as you are connected with your dog's eye contact then click throw the treat away so your dog has to go away find the treat all this time they're using their nose and their brain just trying to find the treat something simple as that is mentally stimulating them and again as they come back round mentally stimulating them they're going to be working out exactly what they've got to do next what did they just do to get that click so again they may run through lots of different things they may be looking for your hands which is why it's advisable to have the clicker behind your back and no treats in your hand and as soon as they make that eye contact again click go for a treat throw it away and so on as soon as you feel you're getting the eye contact I mean some people advise do this sort of 10 or 15 times I advise do this until you are certain that your dog understands that you're expecting eye contact from them if they if you start losing that eye contact at any point whether you're more advanced in clicker training or not then always go back to clicker training um, I tend to always go back to eye contact um, I tend to break my clicker training sessions down um, into 20-30 minutes um, as you're starting out that should be plenty as you start to progress if your dog is not tired worn out mentally stimulated enough after those 20 30 minutes then you need to lengthen the sessions or you need to make them think more you need to start introducing new commands new um, instructions job roles tricks something to get them thinking because um, after all that's what it's all about now after you've uh, gone through the eye contact and they've started learning the sit um, the next one tends to be a lay again I mean hand signals are optional it's whatever you feel comfortable with whatever you feel you are going to remember and because that's the consistent part of things um, when you start introducing a new hand signal 
So for instance, the lay, I'd advise you start phasing out the treats from the set because you don't need to treat every time, especially once your dog has learnt that command. So start phasing them out for the sit and just, just reward every now and then. Um, but while they're learning the new command, treat every time for that new command. And you can run through them in different orders. When, you, when they start getting really confident in the home, run through the commands and the tricks or whatever outside in the garden where there's more distractions, there's noises, neighbours, birds. Um, the more distractions the better. If you can keep their concentration, that's great because you can then apply it, although not with the clicker, always leave that at home, but you can then apply it out on a walk, out in a field. You'll start realising how much how much more responsive they are to you, how they'll be looking at you all the time for instructions and commands. And this can conquer all kinds of different behavioural concerns just because you've built up from the eye contact, from this basic relationship in the home, you've built up into something so much more and you can communicate so much better. Um, I really can't emphasise how great and how rewarding it is for both you and your dog to start clicker training because they really, really want to learn and all they ever want to do is please you. So if you ever think that your dog is doing something wrong, doing something that you don't want. This is not because they think that. They're only doing that because they think that's what you want from them. It's a trained behavior. And clicker training is one way to untrain certain behaviors, to um, train them in a positive way. It's po positive and rewarding for both parties. So hopefully I've covered everything here. If not, I'm sure I'll have to re redo the video again. But anyway, good luck. I'm going to try and add some more videos and clips, breaking down some other commands, tricks. Um, there's a stacking cup routine that they both do. Um, and please give me a thumbs up and upload your own videos for me to have a look. Okay, thank you.